This video is part of Firm Theory Cost. In it, I will show you how to mathematically derive an expansion path and a long run total cost function. A firm's long run cost function shows the relationship between the minimum cost of production and output. This function is derived using input demand functions. That is, to derive long run cost, you first need to derive input demand. The cost of labor equals the price of labor called the wage rate times labor demand and the cost of capital equals the price of capital called the rental rate times capital demand. Long run cost or the total cost is then equal to the cost of labor W times L plus the cost of capital R times K. Let me show you an example. Consider the example of the following Cobb-Douglas production function. For this function, let's derive the long run total cost equation. Again, to find long run total cost, we need to add up the cost of labor and the cost of capital. The cost of labor is the price of labor times the labor demand function. The cost of capital is the price of capital times the capital demand function. So first we need to derive those input demand functions. To see how we derive input demand for this specific Cobb-Douglas production function, please watch my video called Input Demand Mathematical Derivation. In that video, you'll see how and why labor demand in this example is Q over 50 times the square root of R over W and capital demand is Q over 50 times the square root of W over R. So with these input demands in hand, now we're ready to construct the long run cost or long run total cost function. We're gonna multiply each input demand by its price. And then we're going to mathematically simplify. So here I have W times Q over 50 times the square root of R over W which can be simplified to become Q over 50 times the square root of W times R. The cost of capital can be simplified to become Q over 50 times the square root of W times R. So long run total cost is two times Q over 50 times the square root of WR, which can finally be reduced to Q over 25 times the square root of W over R. This is the equation that will tell me for any level of output and for any values of input prices, the long run total cost. Let's explore this a little more. Here I'm presenting again for your convenience, the production function and the corresponding long run total cost function. If we take the derivative of that total cost function with respect to output, we derive the marginal cost equation, which here is a constant, the square root of W times R divided by 25. Marginal cost is constant, and so graphically is represented by a horizontal line. Average total cost can be calculated by dividing the long run total cost equation through by Q, which here would give me the same value as the marginal cost. Average total cost is also constant and equal to the same horizontal line as marginal cost. Why is that? Well, the looks and shapes of these cost curves directly reflects that for this firm, production exhibits constant returns to scale. Constant returns to scale, remember, means that when the firm doubles its inputs, output exactly doubles. So to double output, the firm will double the inputs. Doubling the inputs will also cause the cost to double. So to double the output, the firm will double the cost. This works for any factor, not necessarily doubling. We could triple the inputs, which would triple the output, and triple the cost. 
we could quadruple the inputs, which would quadruple the output, which would quadruple the cost. The point is that cost is going up by the same proportion that output is going up. Cost is increasing at a constant rate, therefore, with output. In other words, average total cost and marginal cost are constant. You can see this, I think, most directly with the average total cost equation. Average total cost, again, can be found by dividing long run total cost through by Q. So if we double the output, that would require double the inputs, and double the inputs exactly doubles cost, so the average total cost doesn't change. The numerator and denominator both increase by the same proportion. What I want you to see is that there's a connection between production and cost. Here, when production exhibits a constant returns to scale, total cost increases with output at a constant rate.